Hey y'all, it's Mary Hyatt, and I'm so excited you're here for this month's topic, which is all about core wounds. I am ready to go deep this month and look at what is really at the root of all of our behaviors, beliefs, and responses. I believe that right now, self-awareness is so imperative and understanding why we do what we do is going to lead us into a deeper freedom and invite us to come back home to our truest selves. So this month, we're going to be exploring the role our core wounds play in our life and how we can begin to heal them. So what? What do you say? Let's hop into it. Welcome to the Living Fully Alive podcast with Mary Hyatt, here to help you find your authentic voice, learn how to love yourself, and embrace your life. And now, your host, life and mindset coach, body love advocate, and doTERRA presidential diamond, Mary Hyatt. Hey everyone, it is Mary and I am so honored to be with you this month as we are diving into our new theme of core wounds. It's going to be kind of a short month. We only have three episodes for this month's topic and I'm going to use today to really get into the basics and foundation of what is a core wound, how we got it in the first place? <laughs> like, how do we start with this core wound? Where does it come from? What do we do about it? How do I identify it in ourselves? And because this is sort of a, a heavier topic, I do want to make sure to say that, you know, if stuff gets triggered as we get into this, please reach out to a therapist, to a um, coach that you've been working with. If you have a coach, somebody that is trained to help you look at some of this deeper stuff, because as we, with anything, peel back layers and start looking at things that we have buried and we have been very strategic in keeping below the surface, as we bring new awareness to it and as sometimes some of this stuff comes up to the surface, we may need some support in navigating through those wounds. It's like opening up a, a wound and it's going to be raw. It's going to be tender. And so I just want to make sure that if there's anything that shows up for you, that you really do reach out to qualified professionals to assist you in this journey of healing and new awareness and mindfulness and all the beautiful things that come from this journey. But I know for me, I this week I had to call my therapist back up and I was like, girl, I need a session. <laughs> I have a coach that I meet with regularly. You know, there's just times when we need a little bit more support than normal. So just want to say that as a caveat to definitely use your support team as needed as we get through this month. But gosh, I, I just want to share too that for me, like one of the things that's been showing up in my own work is this desire to go deeper with you guys. And the idea of core wounds came up as a possible topic. And I think that we're ready for it, especially with sort of the dismantling that we've had over the past. Oh, mercy. I mean, for those of us that have been doing this work, I mean, it's been happening for a long time, but certainly over the past year. And I just feel like there is a an awakening that's happened, sort of a collective consciousness that we are experiencing that is inviting us to look at some of these deeper issues so that we can truly clear and transmute those energies and that they don't have a hold on us any longer. That's why I love doing this work. That's why I love having my one-on-one -on -one clients. That is why I love teaching workshops. That's why I love having my, my fully live circle membership because I know that the time is now to clear out some of this old stagnant subconscious limiting beliefs so that we can make space for a new way of relating to life, a new way of relating to ourselves, a new way of relating to our higher power. And we first have to understand what that core wound is. So let me kind of just paint you a picture just for a second. So we are all born into the world. And we are, are here to spread unconditional love and to heal. That's my personal belief that like all of us come in as whole beings and our core wound is sort of our, our first experience where we become separate from that unconditional love. And every single one of us has this sort of originating moment 
And it's going to be different. It's going to be different ages, different experiences. Some people have really intense trauma. Others, it's it's more subtle. It's more chronic over time. Sometimes it's one event. Sometimes it's many events. But we all have this experience where we go, something must be wrong with me. Okay. So our, our core wound, and again, this is different for each of us, is birthed out of that moment when we move from thinking that we are whole to thinking that we are flawed in some way. Now, this could be from messaging from, again, an event. It could be uh, messaging from our parents, from our church, from our teachers, you know, these these subtle or really overt messages that come in that basically shake everything up to say there's something wrong with you. And we all internalize this as children, sadly, in a very objective way. It's like we see those things being communicated to us through trauma or otherwise as truth. Like we don't question it. We don't ask ourselves like we would as an adult. Like, I don't think this is really true. Like that's your opinion of me or or that's your judgment of me or your criticism of me. But the truth is I'm a wonderful person. I'm a whole person. And that's not true. But as children, we don't have the psychological maturity and even the, the the physical, neurological brain maturity to be able to filter and to say, hey, wait a second, that's their stuff that they're putting on me. That's their own wounding that they're projecting onto me. That's their own generational stuff that they're bringing in and putting on me. And I'm not going to accept it. As kids, we don't have that. And so we just assume it. We take it on as truth. And then it creates almost like this domino effect that happens afterwards where all of a sudden, now we have this new identity that somehow we are broken, we are flawed, we are not enough, there's something wrong with us. And then based out of that core wounding, we then try to subconsciously figure out the best thing that we can in order to get back to experience that original unconditional love. Except for at this point, it's conditional. So this is where we jump through all of these hoops. We end up... uh, dancing and, you know, assuming a role in our families and our friend circles of this personality that ends up creating our personal reality. And it's all based out of this core wound. So who we are, kind of the the, the person that we construct, our personality, what we like, what we value, what we're afraid of, our limiting beliefs, you know, all of a sudden we're essentially like constructing everything from a place of wounding rather than a place of wholeness, which is to me like the the heartbreaking part. And that's why I want to talk about it today and I want to kind of break it down. And that originating event that causes this this core wound oftentimes happens in childhood and then subsequently happens like again and again and again many times. But it usually comes from three sources. Rejection, abandonment or betrayal. Rejection, abandonment or betrayal. So typically we're experiencing this from people that we love and trust and that are caring for us. And we, again, kind of come into the world and there's this sense of safety. There's this sense of I'm okay. There's this sense of I'm good. And out of either rejection abandonment or betrayal. And again, there's a whole spectrum to this. So that could be like, you know, really acute. It could, it could also be just again, more chronic over time. Um, but it, but it makes us internalize things about ourselves that we had never thought before, like that we're inadequate, that we're unlovable, that we are, are not enough. And so a shame message is absorbed from this event. So if we get judgment or criticism from an outside person or disgust from an outside person, what happens is as kids, we end up internalizing it. Again, we're not we're not questioning that. And then we construct this very wonderful um, personality to protect ourselves from getting hurt again. 
in whatever way that looks like. And we manage this wound. We control this wound. We, we bury it. We push it down. We, we, we numb it. We avoid it. We deny it. We do our best to not have to feel it again. And so the reason that this is so important to kind of hone in on is it's not like once we bury it, it goes away. And I think everybody probably listening, y'all have experienced this. Good Lord, I have experienced this myself, that we know the wound is still there because it gets reactivated and triggered when things um, are uncertain. So like, that's why I say it's important to look at this now because there's so much uncertainty in our world that everybody's stuff is getting triggered right now. Everybody's core wound is resurfacing and we're getting triggered. Those trauma triggers, those abuse triggers, those inadequacy triggers. Um, When bad things happen, we get triggered. And here's what's interesting. When good things happen, we get triggered. It's like, how many times have you experienced that feeling of like, okay, it's good, but like, when is the other shoe going to drop? Or when is the rug going to get pulled out from under me? And oftentimes, because of these core wounds, we have a hard time even allowing things to be good, to be safe, to be stable. And these triggers are when this wound is getting reactivated. And it sort of brings us back to that original state and we get irrational. We kind of shift from our um, frontal cortex, our, our executive functioning brain, and we move back to that survival brain, that lizard brain, that reptilian brain that is all about survival. And so we're reactive. We end up living and, and breathing and, and uh, feeding on stress. And if we're in that cycle long enough, we get burnt out, we get exhausted, we end up um, self-sabotaging, blowing up our lives. Like it's a whole cascading event. But when we bring in a sense of awareness to what's going on, we can meet those wounds. We can meet our triggers in a whole new way that puts us back into control so that we're not like being controlled by our core wound, but we are loving it into healing. And that to me is the invitation for having this conversation about core wounds is that we have the opportunity to like put the salve on it, to put the herbs, to put the oils, to put the ointments on this wound so that it can heal. So that it doesn't, you know, kind of begin to scab over and we think we're okay and then it gets ripped off over and over again. I mean, that is just like, oh, and it's an exhausting way to live. And I can attest to that because for many years of my own life, especially when I was married, I was young. Everything that I did was an unconscious reaction to this core wound that I didn't have the awareness of. So my behavior, my self-sabotage, the way that I hurt other people, the way that I lied, the way that I uh, coped and managed and numbed was out of the lack of awareness of my core wound. And so I was literally like a gaping open wound trying to feel like I was enough, trying to get love. And it was coming out all kinds of different sideways because I didn't have that awareness of what was actually going on. So I couldn't mend it. I couldn't tend to it. I couldn't um, be there for in the way that I can now with new awareness. So I just love this conversation. So Dr. Lisa Rankin, I just adore her. She says, core wounds tend to be the things like a sense of not being enough, of being unlovable to a parent, of feeling stupid, dirty, unwanted, or ugly. No matter what your core wound may be, you can guarantee that your wound influences who you are and how you behave. You may heal your wound, yet how it affects you may live on. So that's the thing. It's like we can heal and, and yet, it, you know, we once we know how to handle a trigger, all of a sudden we have all this freedom that can open up to us. And then um, I want to read this other quote because I think this is a a really helpful way as we kind of set the foundation of what it is. And then I'm going to get into the six different types of core wounds. Um, I love this quote by Christina Amerman because it, it to me is like the definition. Okay. So your core wound is the deepest pattern in your subconscious mind. 
It's the first chakra block. So your first chakra is your first energy center. And that, and I'm just pausing. This is not her quote anymore. <laughs> this is an ad lib. Your, your first chakra is safety and security. It's like basic needs are being met. Am I safe? And I, am I secure? And that is, if you think about like Mas- Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that is your foundational level. Am I going to have a place to, to sleep? Do I have shelter? Do I have food? Will I have nourishment? Am I safe in a place that I won't be, you know, harmed or hurt or abused or killed? And so that that base level, that first chakra is is everything. When that is unstable, when we at a core level, subconscious level, do not feel safe, then that's going to affect everything above it afterwards. And so that's why I want to look at this. So let me read this again by Christina Amerman. Your core wound is the deepest pattern in your subconscious mind. It's the first chakra block, limiting belief, negative emotional pattern that you experience in this human life. I often refer to the core wound as the center of the onion. If you think of all your negative emotions and limiting beliefs as layers of an onion that grew on top of each other, like layers of an onion, the core wound is the very first layer on which all the other layers are based. When you heal the core wound, all of the other layers lose their foundation and begin to dissolve. I mean, can we just have a moment? Like, think about that. You know, we talk about in healing, like we're pulling back all the layers and like, oh, here's a new layer. Here's a new layer. And there is, and I I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but there is a center of the onion. Hey y'all, real quick, I wanted to invite you to join me on my upcoming live online workshop happening on April 24th called The Magic of Meditation for Anxiety, Burnout, and Stress. I'm so excited about teaching this three-hour interactive workshop. And if you've ever been curious about meditation, but maybe you felt intimidated by it, or maybe you've been meditating on and off for a little while, but haven't quite found how to make it a consistent practice, this is going to be a powerful workshop for you. We're really going to hone in on using meditation to help alleviate anxiety, stress, and burnout. And we're going to do this in a very interactive way. So there will be journal prompts. I'm going to walk you through several powerful and refreshing guided meditations. There'll even be an intimate Q&A. But my goal for this workshop is really to equip you with these tools of meditation that can leave you feeling confident to access your inner strength, peace, and joy, no matter what life throws at you. So to register and find out more about the magic of meditation for anxiety, burnout, and stress, make sure to go over to maryhyatt.com forward slash meditation, maryhyatt.com forward slash meditation to find out all of the details and to register. All right, guys, let's get back to this week's episode. And that center is our core wound where everything else builds from. So the way that I kind of think about it is that you're, you have your core wound. That's think of that as the center of the onion. And then the next layer that we have is this layer of protection. If we think about we don't want to uh, touch it, it's too raw, it hurts too much. So So we build in a layer of protection. And then based out of that, we create kind of the next layer is our subconscious thoughts and beliefs. So that that secondary belief system is being generated and created because of this core wound. So what we believe about the world, what we believe about other people, what we believe about love, what we, we believe about money, what we believe about God all comes from that core wound. But that's that's kind of the, the outer layer it are these subconscious thoughts and beliefs. It's the things that we internalize about ourselves and about the world. So some of those subconscious beliefs are, um, I am flawed, I am broken, I am ugly, I am disgusting, I am unlovable. You know, those could be some of those subconscious thoughts or beliefs. It could be that men more universal beliefs. Men are bad. Men are abusers. Women are bad. Um, Women are weak. Men are strong. Uh, Money is the root of all evil. I mean, when you think about like these things that you never really pause to question 
these beliefs, these limiting beliefs that you never really had awareness about because they were given to you as children, how you see the world, the way you perceive it, the perception, those are those subconscious thoughts and beliefs. And then, because if we really looked at all of those, it would be like too much to handle. We have another wall, another layer to the onion that is a, is is our our guard, uh, our our protective layer that nobody really gets to see. It's sort of below the surface. And then what's on the surface, our conscious beliefs, our conscious thoughts, those are the things that we are aware of from day to day. Those are our, um, you know, our operating system that, that we're conscious of, that we have some, some, uh, we're clued into that, I guess, is a way to say it. You know, like we go, oh, okay, like I know that this is going on for me. I know that I've been thinking this. Um, we might state our values. We might state our religious beliefs, like all of those things that we know consciously that we would tell someone else. So that's sort of the outside part of that onion. So then you, as you start peeling it back and you go, okay, how am I numbing? How am I coping away from these subconscious beliefs? And then the, the next layer is how am I having even more layers of numbness, of protection to keep me from this core wound. So that's kind of how we can look at that, I think is really helpful. So we get to the bullseye, we get to that center layer, the the center of the onion, boom, all of this begins to shift. The, the subconscious and the conscious thoughts begin to shift and become more in alignment within a healed center rather than a, a wounded center. Okay, so let's talk about some of these actual core wounds. So as we know, those core wounds then are going to drive everything that we do, right? It's going to lead us into depression. It's going to lead us into anxiety. It's going to cause addiction. It's going to cause intimacy issues. All kinds of things come from this place. And so I want to give you an idea of what this could look like so that you can begin to up your level of awareness and self-identify uh, yourself as well. So let's take a look at the top six core wounds. And I I have adapted this a little bit from this woman named Felicia Gioz, Giozelis. I know I'm butchering that. I'm so sorry. Um, but she's a specialist in core wounds. And I just think it's so helpful to look at this like list by list, number by number, um, because it's all kind of around feeling inadequate, feeling um, worthless, less than, never enough. And then, of course, what comes from this is we have this illusion that we have to work extra hard to make up for this deficit from this defect that we have. So the first core wound is the abandoned abandonment wound. Y'all, let me just put like a star, a heart. I'm going to circle this one because this is mine. And I, I very often come back to this. It's like, okay, if I peel back all the layers of my behavior and why I'm doing this and why I'm saying yes to this and why I'm contorting and, and shape-shifting, it's to avoid this wound, the abandonment wound, number one. And this is when you have a fear of losing someone or something, including yourself. This could be like a, a fear of self-abandonment as well. And again, this can come from childhood. If you had an inconsistent parent, if you did experience abandonment as a child in some way, psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually, however that may have come through, um, it is usually an attachment wound here of an inconsistent caregiver uh, or a loss of a loved one, of a family member, of somebody you care deeply about, of a parent, um, this is going to show up for you. So when this is unhealthy, when when that wound, that abandonment wound hasn't been tended to, it can branch out into a bunch of different coping strategies, one of which is codependency, right? That clinging, that, that attaching to, making sure like I will never be alone because the fear is, I'm going to be alone. And obviously, when we are afraid of abandonment, what that means is psychological death. Back in the day when we were um, living as tribes, you know, getting getting extracted from the tribe, from the group meant death. So in our primal nervous system, abandonment equals death unconsciously. 
So we either do two things, either we become codependent or we isolate and we become way too self-reliant and we need no one, right? So it's like, I'm going to protect myself so that nobody ever leaves me again. I'm going to not put myself in a position where I'd have to be vulnerable. So we either move towards people in an unhealthy way and attach to them through codependency or we, we leave people before we get left. So this can be a fear of opening up. This can be a fear of vulnerability, a fear of being yourself. Um, and again, all of these are, we're going to do whatever we can do to not have to feel this pain again. So that's the first wound is the abandonment wound. The second is the rejection wound. So this one is interesting because with rejection, you're going to feel trapped and you're going to have to shape shift a lot so that you aren't rejected. It's like it's very challenging to be yourself when this is your with when this is your wounding. And so oftentimes you can feel a lot of guilt, a lot of shame around how you have been, your your past self. You might feel um, guilty around past choices. You might feel like you've in in some ways abandoned yourself. And that that's hard to find your true authentic self because there's such a fear of rejection and that it's it's really there's this break of trust with yourself. It's like who you really are, there's a lot of denial around that. Like your truest self doesn't have space to be free or room or have room or breathe because there's this fear of failure. So when rejection is that core wound, Oftentimes, you can see overachievers come into this category. Um, they'll do everything they can to be successful, to be pleasing, to be a good mother, um, so that nobody says, hey, you're not doing enough. Nobody says you're stupid. No one says um, you can't do it. So that's the rejection wound. The third abandonment wound is the intimacy wound. And now this is where we bring in some trauma here. Now, I mean, all of these are going to stem from some form of trauma, like big T trauma or little t trauma. But intimacy is definitely comes from a lot of, um, a lot of trauma, honestly. And so for most people who experience this, they've been through at least some kind of sexual trauma. Um, such as rape or assault. Um, oftentimes it can be from visibly seeing as well, like a, a traumatic experience, even if it wasn't to your own body, witnessing the trauma from someone else, um, especially a parent, like if you had um, a, a mother that was abused or a father that was abused and witnessing that as a child, even if it wasn't for to you directly, um, this can come into play here as well. Um, but there's been some kind of abuse typically that you've witnessed or experienced, whether that is um, physically, sexually, emotionally, but essentially as a child, the environment wasn't safe. Like there wasn't a, a, a space for love. There wasn't a space to feel safe. Oftentimes in this environment, uh, children repress how they feel. They feel like they can't use their voice. Um, there's there's a huge piece of the trust within others that's been broken and um, it's not safe. So that is the intimacy wound, which of course can show up in a lot of different sideways ways. Um, with attachment wounds, as we know, of uh, avoiding intimacy, uh, avoiding um, sexual experiences, or on the flip side, like being hypersexual uh, and kind of repeating those cycles again. So it can come out sideways. And this is why I said at the beginning, like this is where y'all, as you begin to self-identify, please reach out to your therapist, um, somebody that can support you through this or a, a trained coach um, to, to walk through this with you as you go through this. So the, the fourth wound is the vulnerability wound. And this is where somewhere in the past you have been mocked or shamed or made fun of or judged or criticized for your past choices, for opening up, for being honest, for sharing your thoughts, for sharing your opinions. And 
basically you were in an environment where someone that you love, somebody, someone you were close to made you doubt yourself so often and repeatedly that you start feeling like you've just made the wrong choice, like something is wrong with you and that you're stupid. And um, you end up getting into a place where you don't make any choices anymore, where you you literally are like, well, gosh, I can't even trust myself. Like I've done the wrong thing every single time. And so these people often change their minds a lot. Um, they can be paralyzed by decision making. It's hard for them to move forward. And there's this this fear that they're going to get it wrong, that there's something in them that like can't be their true selves. They can't fail. They can't be, be vulnerable. Um, and so they basically just stop moving forward in fear that they're going to get it wrong. So then the the fifth core wound is the responsibility wound. And this is, I can identify with this one as well. So oftentimes um, people with this wound are going to worry about being judged and the idea of letting other people down. And so there's this this tendency to over um, be over responsible for other people. This is kind of like a little bit of codependency, uh, where there is this need to um, either overdo it, or there's such a fear of of you know how can I say this? Like um, you avoid being seen because you're afraid of success. So like you don't want to have the responsibility. So it's the opposite. So either you're like overly responsible or you don't want to be responsible at all. Like that that idea of like, you know, as a child, when you've been given too much to be responsible for, like I think that for a lot of people, especially a lot of my clients that I work with, it's like they were asked to be adults when they were children far too early. Like they became the mother. They became the father. They became the caretaker. They were the ones taking care of their parents. They were the ones that were taking care of their, their siblings. And so they were overly responsible at an age age where they should have been having fun and being playful. And so that's the responsibility wound. And so either they continue that pattern in adult life and they end up uh, still being very over-responsible, over-reliant, controlling, um, can be often manipulating, or it can come out in this form of not wanting to be responsible at all. So they procrastinate. They can be seen as lazy. They um, almost like reject everything that they experience in early life. And they don't like a goal setting, you know, anything that has to do with structure. They're like, no way. And so that plan keeps them safe from being in that role again. I can really identify with that for sure. I was very responsible early on that now any kind of commitment, I'm just like, it almost like makes me want to break out in hives. And I'm like, I need high variety in my life. And again, all of this is from that core wound, right? And then lastly, this is the sixth core wound. And this is called the burden wound, where you often feel a sense of dread, like in the pit of your stomach and get overwhelmed by day-to-day tasks. This is sort of that um, place, that worst case scenario thinking. You worry about disappointing others. You desire to change, but you remain stuck. Um, You have a reason for everything that you can't accomplish and you create stories that only serve to justify your inaction. And so that's that sense of being, being a burden, being a burden. Everything is a burden. Everything feels heavy. Everything feels exhausting. There's a lot of victimhood in this, this wound. There's a lot of, um, just like, I can't, I can't do it. Like everything feels like it's too much. So those are the six core wounds. And typically they're all surrounded by these core beliefs And so again, kind of self-identify here, like, and some of the core wound beliefs that sort of go along with this would be like, um, I am imperfect. So there's something that, that is wrong with me. And so if you think about like what we do to compensate when that is the core wound, like, let's say you have an abandonment wound that shows up with the belief, I'm not perfect or I'm imperfect, you know, that there's something, there's something fatally flawed with me. So then 
a way you might compensate because we all are searching for love at the end of the day. You might have a story that says, I've got to be perfect. Like I must be perfect. I can't get it wrong. I can't screw it up. You start seeking out external validation. You are probably a high achiever, high performer that gets you praise, that gets you validation. Um, you might end up being um, a little bit narcissistic sometimes. And the, the, the misunderstanding is, is if I can do this perfectly, if I can do enough, then I'll be healed. Then I'll be loved. So at the end of the day, all of us are trying to receive love. It's like um, we are suffering and we are separate from love. And therefore, we construct this personality to come back home to that unconditioned self, to that part of ourselves that's unconditionally loving towards who we truly are at our core, at our center, to be loved and accepted just as we are. So another uh, belief that we might have is I am worthless. Like I have no value. And so part of what we might do to compensate for that could be like, I've got to prove that I'm not worthless. So I'm going to overdo it. I'm going to stay the latest. I've got to show you how valuable I am. I've got to sing from the rooftops about my achievements. Um, I'm going to personally caretake everyone. I'm going to put everybody's needs above my own. And this, this person is often very dependent, not very independent, because they feel like if I can give to others, then I'll be loved. If I can give and give and give and give, then I'll have value. So that's a tricky one. So another belief is I'm just giving you these options because this is, again, the intro to you beginning to think about, okay, what is it that's motivating me to do anything in my life? Like, why do I have the job that I have? Why do I have the relationship that I have? Why do I respond the way that I do inside of my relationship? Why do I get triggered? Why do I um, own this car, have this house? Whatever your external environment is, your reality of life is, there is a motivation that's coming from this core wound subconsciously if you haven't done your work. And that's why it's like, okay, let's look at this and see what if this is actually like truly, truly me, the life that I've constructed, the personality that I've crafted, what part of that is like my truest essence and what I actually really value and what part of that is my best attempt to heal this core wound or to not feel that core wound again, or to avoid that core wound again, or maybe I'm repeating that core wound again. Like taking a look and inventory of that is really helpful because we go from unconscious to conscious and all of a sudden we move from reaction to, hey, wait a second. Like I want to have some say so in this and I don't want to come from a place that's unhealthy. I want to come from the truest version of myself a, a part of me that knows I'm worthy and beautiful and whole and worthy of loving and of belonging. So a couple of our quick beliefs here for your options is I cannot do or I cannot, um, I, sorry, I cannot do enough. And so with that, the, the belief is like, I cannot do, decide, or act. So I must have done something bad and that's why I'm separate from love. And therefore it is better not to do or else something bad will, will happen. So basically like you're blaming yourself that you are the cause of this. So it's best if you just almost like, you know, fight, flight, or freeze, freeze. Don't do anything. Nobody can blame you. Nobody can criticize you. Nobody can fault you. Like if you're just sort of flying under the radar and you're like neutral, that in your mind is a way of being safe. And so either you compensate for your personality by making sure you can do, or you just basically like our middle, middle of the road kind of person. Um, and man, like nothing. So then a couple of their beliefs, I am inadequate. Like I'm stupid. I don't know enough. And so the compensation, the compensating personality is, okay, well, I'm going to make sure that you know I'm smart that I am totally capable, that I know what I'm talking about, that you respect me, that I never want to be seen or rejected, again, abandoned, rejected, or betrayed for being stupid, for being not smart enough, for being inadequate. So I'm going to make sure that I know enough in order to be loved and to be safe. Another belief is I am non-existent. So that is a, a deep 
core wound of like, I don't exist. I don't matter. I am nothing. I have nothing that comes from um, neglect in childhood, comes from not being seen. Um, And so the idea is if I just kind of stay in the background, if I disappear enough, then I'll be loved. Like, I don't want to shake the boat. I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to shake it up. I don't want to be the black sheep. Like, as long as I'm neutral and I'm not loud, then I'll be safe. Then I'll be loved. So you can see how we begin to craft these personalities to keep ourselves safe. Um, other other quick ones are, I am alone. I am incompetent. I am powerless. I am loveless. And so everything that we do is to prove that we're not those things, that we're worthy of love we're worthy of belonging in some form or fashion. So as we go through this this month, I'll, I'll really get into ways that we can begin to heal this, that we can begin to look at, okay, what is this secondary like false sense of self that I've crafted as a response to this core wound? And how can I begin to take away some of those pressures, those ways that I'm coping my coping strategy to be loved and and step deeper into my own unconditional loving. Like I think what I've learned in this process is that at the end of the day, I'm the only one that can validate myself in my higher power. But like I can't find that from the outside. So as I compensate and I find myself overachieving or isolating or becoming um, hyper-independent or self-reliant or becoming codependent, as I find myself getting triggered, it's like this becomes my work to come come in and self-soothe, to take my own hand, especially like this is where inner child work comes in, to lovingly go back to those times when that wound occurred And as my adult self, like self-imposing myself with my little girl and my imagination and, and being with her, hanging out with her, loving her, telling her that there is nothing wrong with her, that she is perfect, that she is whole, that she is lovable, and that she does not have to earn love. Like I have to do that work consistently. Every time I get triggered, it's like part of what I do to heal this core wound is I go, okay, here's my core wound. It's showing up. I'm getting triggered and I may not know it at first. Like, you know, oftentimes our, our wounds can be tricky, but I get triggered. Like that's my first sign that like something's up. I've touched on a wound that's tender, that's raw. When I get triggered, when I feel reactive, when I'm feeling hurt, when I'm feeling angry, when I'm feeling scared, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling stressed, those are like my warning signs. Those are my indicators that something's out of balance. It's like the warning sign in the car. It's like, ooh, got like go check your engine. And so for me, I've learned that, okay, here's the trigger. Let's recognize the trigger first. Can I name it? Like I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm fearful. I'm upset, I'm angry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lonely, I'm feeling guilty, I'm feeling shame, whatever it might be. Recognizing that feeling and then giving myself permission to feel it. Because it's real, like the way that my brain is experiencing that trigger, it's real. Whether, it's, whether it is or not isn't really the issue. It's like I can sit with that part of myself that is really scared, that's feeling fearful and be in that moment with myself And then bringing in that unconditional loving, soothing myself, coming in. We talk about this process a lot, but like letting ourselves feel and then bringing in that love. Like I see you, I hear you, validating ourselves. That is so powerful. I hear you, I see you, you matter. And sometimes I have to do this in visualization and go back to my inner child and tell her that. Sometimes just in the moment I tell myself like, you're okay. You're safe. I'm right here with you. Just breathe. It's okay. You know? And then lastly, in this process, it's like I get to remind myself of what's true. The truest part of my essence, my lovability, my unconditional loving essence that I cannot lose and I cannot earn, reminding myself of my wholeness, walking myself back home to the truth. That to me is the work. So from trigger all the way through to naming it, feeling it, soothing it, to then reminding myself of what's true. And without mindfulness, we can just, you know, think it's who we are. Oh, I, I'm, I have anxiety. 
It's like, yeah, but there's a there's a core there. There's there's a center of the onion there that's causing that anxiety. It's not just a chemical thing. There's something going on here. And so this is why I love meditation. This is why I'm really excited about the workshop that's coming up um, in a couple weekends. And because it's like when we can get at the core of our stress, our burnout, our anxiety, our depression, our isolation, our fears, all of a sudden we invite ourselves into freedom. And that's why understanding our core wounds is so liberating because they no longer control us. They no longer have power over us. All of a sudden we become in the driver's seat and we go, oh, right, that's my core wound and get it activated again. I see you. I hear you. You're okay. You matter. And all of a sudden we are able to respond in a different way. It's through that mindfulness that we talked about last month. It's through that pause of noticing and observing what's showing up, what's getting activated inside of ourselves and then lovingly, you know, bringing in that, that, that gentleness, that tenderness, that compassion for ourselves. So y'all, I'm excited for the rest of this month to continue this conversation. Make sure to share this. Make sure to tag me if you listen to it. Share it on your social. I would love to hear your insights, what what little nuggets you got, what was eye-opening for you, what aha moments you had. I just think that that's part of this journey. And of course, if you're in the circle, we're going to be doing this all month together, which I'm excited about. So I will see y'all next week. But until then, remember that the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great, and to be full. I'll see y'all next week. Bye. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you got some amazing nuggets to take home and start implementing into your life. And if you're looking for the show notes and links, head on over to maryhyatt.com forward slash show. And if you loved it, why not bring your girlfriends along this journey of becoming fully alive with you? Just give a quick share of this episode to your social channels and enjoy those debriefing convos with your besties. Thanks again. And I can't wait to connect with you next week.